one wants to distinguish between homologous and analogous in the way evolutionists use these words. Homologous structures or homologous molecules have the same evolutionary origin, and they may or may not have the same function, whereas analogous uh, structures or molecules have um, the same function, uh, always have the same function. For example, let's take the wings of a bat and the wings of a mosquito. Those are clearly uh, analogous structures. They have the same function, but they have different evolutionary origins. On the basis of morphological data, it's extremely difficult to characterize or infer uh, chemical composition. It is possible in some cases if you have a morphological structure that you can relate to some modern morphological structure, for example, a cyanobacterial sheath, that you may be able to infer a particular chemical composition for that structure. In this case, you would infer a mucopolysaccharide composition for that sheath. But uh, short of that type of thing, it's very difficult to infer uh, chemical property from strictly morphological data. The word biostenosis is much more frequently used in um, Russian and other literature, and it means community. It means populations of different kinds of organisms living in the same place at the same time either extant or fossil. The algal pillars that are referred to, I'm pretty sure what he's referring to, he's basically referring to stromatolites, and in the, in the gunflint, in the Schreiber Beach faces of the gunflint, those stromatolites have a pillar-like morphology. They're kind of finger-sized and they look something like this, the layers, and I'm sh that's in particular what he was referring to with the pillar shape. It really is a pillar being sort of an elongate vertical profile uh, as opposed to some kind of slightly domal or flat laminated uh, material. In terms of whether or not these pillars were created by algae or not, we really don't know. It's most likely that those laminated structures were created by some uh, form of prokaryote. Uh, certainly not algal in the sense of uh, eukaryotic algal. This really refers to, uh, well, two separate, two processes that have to do with the accumulation, accumulation of a particular matte layer. The uh, degradation phase really has to do with the microbial degradation of organic matter pretty, uh, pretty much. The productive phases that he refers to refer to either the precipitation of mineral matter or the trapping and binding of particulate grains within a, within a particular algal mat layer. This question really is discussed much more fully uh, by uh, Stepko Galyabek's tapes on both on the Shark Bay material and the Abu Dhabi material. In general, to distinguish blue-green algae, that is cyanobacteria from other bacteria, is practically impossible. They, are, they have very much in common in size and so on. However, it is certainly true that cyanobacteria tend to be more complex. That is, many kinds tend to be more complex. And one, one sees complex tapering filaments and coccoids of various sizes in common sheath, especially when the environment is that characteristic for cyanobacteria, then it's a good inference that you have cyanobacteria and not other various kinds of photosynthetic and heterotrophic bacteria. But one cannot be sure. The explanation for the fact that Bitter Springs fossils are better preserved uh, and less chemically altered probably has mostly to do with, with the age of the uh, material. The gunflint material is approximately two billion years old. The Bitter Springs is one billion years old, and it appears that uh, that it's probably merely just age that is the difference between the, them chemically. In terms of actual morphology of organisms, there is probably an equal amount of of detailed preservation 
um, in terms of structural detail preserved in each sequence. Phytane and pristane are found in the sediments, that is, they're organic geochemical derivatives, and it's been thought that they are derivatives of isoprenoids, especially the phytyl, the phytyl side chain of the chlorophyll molecule. Phytyl is a, a C20 compound, I think, maybe it's C19, I'm not sure, C19 compound. Um, it is an isoprenoid, Isoprenoid compounds are extremely important in biology. Isoprenoids are all formed from an intermediate called isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Pyrophosphate, this compound, this phosphorylated compound, gives rise to carotenoids found in all photosynthetic organisms, quinones also found in photosynthetic organisms, and on the side chain of the chlorophyll molecule. Now, one of the interpretations of the phytane and pristane found in sediments is that it comes from the side chain, this, iso, I, uh, this isoprenoid side chain of chlorophyll. That is more of an assumption than a proved fact. It's likely that phytane and pristane being present in large quantity and the side chain of chlorophyll being present in large quantity, that they are related, but it's never really been proved. Are there any other possible origins for phytane and pristane? Oh, certainly there are. Phytane and pristane are not identical at all to the phytol. They have uh, much more hydrogen around them, which is typical when things, when compounds get into sediment. Um, there are other possibilities, and what they are are not really known in detail because no one has started with completely characterized compounds, subject them to diageneticists and find out what happens, and find out, and no one has found out what the process, products are in the in the uh, sedimentary record. So they're there are many possibilities, but one reads in the literature that phytane and, phytane and pristane are signs of chlorophyll, and that probably isn't correct. Did, first of all, probably chlorophyll is a product of not prebiotic processes, but of organisms. As far as we know, the biosynthesis of chlorophyll itself is completely limited to organisms, not, it, it's not a prebiotic process at all. Yes, certainly there are more than one types of chlorophyll formed during the Archean because we have remnant bacteria, that is bacteria that are alive today that are probably very much like their Archean ancestors that have more than one type of chlorophyll. They have bacterial chlorophyll A, bacterial chlorophyll B, bacterial chlorophyll C, chlorobium chlorophyll, etc. Um, those chlorophyll are very similar to each other. They're, very, they're small substitutions on the chlorophyll molecule. No one has ever been able to show the production of chlorophyll itself by prebiotic processes. So that one assumes that, that the production of chlorophyll is a seam. It is a metabolic pathway of great selective advantage that evolved within bacteria, basically, photosynthetic bacteria. The evolutionary process of mutation certainly has produced the variety of chlorophylls, but only in the prokaryotes. That is, bacterial chlorophylls that are quite related to each other can be shown to be extremely varied in different sorts of bacteria. There are probably six or seven different kinds of chlorophyll that can be derived from each other by various mutational steps. Algal and plant chlorophylls are completely confined to plastids and presumably they were acquired when the plastids were acquired, that is, the chlorophylls were acquired, and the entire photosynthetic pathway, the biosynthetic pathway the, for the synthesis of chlorophyll was acquired when the algae, and which are the common ancestors to the plants, acquired their plastids. After that, there may have been a few small mutations, but basically very few because chlorophylls are the same in algae, in green algae and plants. For example, all chlorophylls in green algae and plants are the same as each other. They are chlorophylls A and B.